Unit 13 is on probability, so today in this video we're going to look at theoretical and experimental probabilities. So we'll start with the definition. Probability is the number between 0 and 1. It tells us the likelihood an event will occur. So if we have an event that is certain to occur, it has a probability of 1. An event that's certain not to occur has a probability of 0. And if we have an event that's equally likely to occur or not occur, it has a probability of one half. For example, if you toss a coin uh, that it will land heads up, probability is one half. Now, probability can be written three ways. It can be in fraction form, one out of two. It can be in decimal form, 0 0.500, and I recommend going out three decimal places because then in the last form, percent, you're going to round it to the nearest whole percent, within, which in this case is 50%. Okay. Here we have a number line that just kind of explains it a little bit more. So the definition of probability is the ratio of successful outcomes, also called successes, to all outcomes, which are possibilities. So in the case of flipping a coin, there's two sides to the coin, so the number of possibilities is two. If a successful flip is a tails, that's one, so the probability of getting tails when you flip a coin is one out of two. There are two words that have important distinction, and and or. The word and is symbolized with the intersection or upside down U, and it means that you want to satisfy both conditions at the same time. In other words, what is the probability of drawing a card from a deck that is red and a face card? Or is represented by the union or the U symbol, means that the outcome has to satisfy one or the other or both at the same time. For example, what's the probability of drawing a card from a deck that is red or a face card? So here we have a little bit more information about these different probabilities. If I designate P of A as a probability of the first outcome, P of B the probability of the second outcome. If I'm looking at an AND statement, both have to be true to be a successful outcome. You multiply the two separate probabilities together. If we want to calculate the probability of an OR statement, we have two types of scenarios. We have a dependent where we have this formula here and we have independent, which is this formula here, where we add the probabilities. Now, we're going to go into this in a little bit more detail on part two of this unit, so I'm not really going to go through the examples at the bottom of the page. You can do that on your own time. So let's work through some theoretical probabilities. Theoretical probability shows what should happen in an experiment or situation, in other words, in an ideal world. So in our first example, we pick a card at random from the 13 clubs of a standard deck. For those of you who are not familiar with how many cards in a standard deck, there are 52 cards in a standard deck. In fact, let me break this down. In a standard deck, there's a total of 52 cards. There are four suits. And the suits are hearts, diamonds, spades, and clubs. In each suit, there are 13 cards. There is one ace, three face cards. That would be the jack, the queen, the king, and there are nine 
number cards. Two through ten. The hearts and the diamonds are typically colored red. Spades and clubs are typically colored black. If you have another deck of cards, just know that the hearts and diamonds are typically the same color and spades and clubs are the same color. So now, let's calculate the probability that we will draw a face card. Well, there are three face cards. That is our success. And the number of possibilities is 13 because we have 13 clubs. To draw an ace, there is one ace, so it's one out of 13. To draw a club, notice we're picking from 13 clubs, so every card will be a club, so that's 13 out of 13. And to draw a spade, well, we don't have any spades in the cards we're drawing from, so zero out of 13. And if you want to change these into decimals and then percents, this is 0.23 or 23%. This is 0.076 or 8%. This is 1, 100%. And this is 0 or 0%. Okay? All right, moving on to another example. We have a spinner. It has the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4. So the number of possibilities is 4. So the pointer lands on a 5. There is no 5, so it's 0 out of 4. Lands on a 1. There's only 1, 1, so 1 fourth. Pointer lands on an even number. Well, 2 and 4 are even numbers. So we have 2 out of 4, which reduces to 1 half. Pointer lands on a number less than 6. Well, all of these numbers are less than 6. So we have 4 out of 4, which equals 1. Pointer lands on a number greater than 6. Well, none of the numbers are greater than 6. So 0 out of 6, which equals 0. Going down to example three, you roll a fair six-sided die. So six is our possibilities. And you want to know what is the possibility you roll an even number or a number less than three. So from the previous page, we know we're going to add those two probabilities. So let's look at the individual probabilities. What is the probability I roll an even number? Well, the even numbers are 2, 4, 6. So that means the probability I roll an even number is 3 over 6. And I'm not going to reduce this because I need to add these fractions together. Now, the probability the number is less than 3, what is the probability that it is less than 3? Well. The values that are less than 3, 1, 2, so that gives me a probability of 2 over 6. So again, now that we have or, we're going to add these two together. 3, 6 plus 2, 6 equals 5, 6. And if they want you to leave it in fraction form, that's in fraction form. If they want it in decimal form, 0.833 which means we have about an 83% of rolling an even or a number less than 3. And that's theoretical. The last thing we're going to look at is experimental. Experimental probability is what actually happened in an experiment or a situation. So, Jim tossed a coin 35 times and recorded whether it landed heads or tails and these are the results. So since he tossed it 35 times that is your number of possibilities. Looking at the table he tossed it and 20 times it landed heads and 15 times it landed tails. 
Okay, so now we can go ahead and calculate our probability. What was the probability he tossed to heads? Well, he had 20 successful tosses out of 35. To toss tails, he had 15 successful tosses out of 35. Okay, now we're going to do a little reducing here. This becomes 4 sevenths and this becomes 3 sevenths. Okay, now what is the theoretical probability of tossing heads? Well, theoretically it is 1 out of 2 because we have a two-sided head and then one side is heads. I'm sorry, two-sided coin. Theoretical probability of tossing tails is also 1 half. So how do they compare? Well, it's easy to see that the theoretical probability does not equal the experimental probability. And more often than not, this is true. But what I want you to notice what they have in common. If I look at the theoretical probability, the probability of tossing heads plus the probability of tossing tails equals 1. You could read that. What is the probability of tossing heads or tails? Well, it's a probability of 1. Now, when we look at the experimental probability and ask the same question, what is the probability of tossing heads or tails? To toss heads is 4 sevenths. To toss tails, 3 sevenths. We get 7 sevenths, which gives us 1. So, even in the experimental probability, if you're looking at a scenario, whether you're comparing two, three, or four things, they should all add up. The probability should all add up to one.